There we are. I should be live. <clears throat> find something to kill that. We're live at Tubbar Farm. Bear with me one second. We're just no ducks. Um, I'll put that under the phone so I can tilt it a little bit. We are, where am I? I am on peg 13 on Newpool today. Um, when I arrived uh, there was me and one other, two other anglers, three other anglers. There's a few more people now. What time is it? 10 to 10. Um, I got here early doors. Um, then, you know, I thought there might have been a, a Wednesday match, but seemingly not. So I booked in for a match on the weekend on Sunday. Um, so I will be coming back. But today, I'm on uh, Pig 13 on you. I've got the wind off my back. It's been raining. It is raining, um, and I am come down to Tunnelbar Farm today for a practice. Um, specifically, I want to make sure my gear is all in sort of working order. Um, ready for the upcoming spring festival if you watched my um, little mini series that I recorded last night um, I said that I wanted to get some stuff ready um, and this morning I've absolutely proved why I need to um, because all of my shallow rigs are set up for casters yet I intend to fish maggot and I managed to forget worm um, and unfortunately I don't have any here today so I don't have worm to fish down the edge so it sort of proves my point of get me in the game um, if I compete and do well but we're here today it's a lovely day um, despite that walking around with uh, baby chicks spring is definitely here I've got a nice looking peg here um, and hopefully we're gonna catch some fish all I've done is I've set up my rigs I haven't put any bait in and um, we can do that live but I'll just I'll run through the rigs um, before we set up um, so you can see what I might be using today. Firstly, uh, this is my uh, shallow kits. Uh, all of my shallow kits are these two-part ones. Um, I've got some new uh, one uh, single-piece ones, but they're actually shorter, um, which annoyed me a little bit. Um, so anyway, I've got uh, orange hydro throughout 017 to 013, a little 0.2 crystal dibber on there. Um, I've just got two number nines size 18 slwg i've got three of those um set at various depths um what i did was i plumbed up down the track first so i knew how deep the peg was and i've pulled out some shallow kits that are appropriate you know half depth to um you know a couple of inches deep i thought that was a smart thing to do um as i spend more time thinking now uh, orange hyd uh, white hydro on my edge kit uh, it's a 0.3 crystal dibber i've got a bulk of four number nines number nine dropper and i've got a three inch hook length there for uh, a size uh, 18 slwg and i'm going to fish just down towards in line with that um leg off that next platform just over these reeds that's what i'm going to fish down the edge uh, next uh, this is my uh, rig for down the track same again white hydro uh, uh, rw4 by 14 float i've got that shot up with what's that one two three four five six number nines one number 12 number nine dropper uh, size 16 uh, slwg i wanted to use worm on that but that's now going to be three maggots um, and then my short rig which is what i'm going to start on a little pot on there because I'm going to fish meat. Um, I've got a 4 by 10 I'm going to see how that gets on uh, today. Um, coming down, I've got a bulk. Uh, it's a messy bulk by the look of it. Which is two number 9s and two number 12s. The number 9 dropper. Um, and a size 16 SLWG. That's where I'm going to start. 
and my short line is just going to be here I'm going to pop bait in and I've made up some uh, six mil meat you can see it there in the tray some four mil meat and I've got um, four pint of maggots with me and what's that about six pints of ground bait which is one of those um, Blake's pole commercial uh, bags that's what it made up um, so here we go it goes nothing really I haven't fished meat in a long time hopefully these six mil cubes should sit just nice in the size 16 there we go um, I cut it up with a uh, map meat cutter I bought a few of them over the years I have a terrible tendency to um, chuck them in the dishwasher and I don't like that um, I'm going to put in some four mils and just a few six mils on the top let's see how we go there's quite a lot of bait actually in that pot I've got the lid on it I might take the lid off um, or at least the sides for the lid all right we'll just dump the bait hopefully you can see dump the bait there Need to knock that out of the pot clearly and then just drop on top of it make a note of the time five to ten straight away okay what I did when I plumbed it up um, I watched a video last night of uh, Mikey Williams uh, fishing meat um, much credit to um, Mikey um, and he had a real good piece of advice which was um, plumb up down the track and then um, come towards yourself until you see it start to shallow up to start to shelve up and then fish at the bottom of that shelf and I thought that was a good piece of advice now the question is why is that it's not a bite it's the meat sinking the rig why is that happening there look well, that's a problem isn't it I've plumbed this up to be a few bits, a few um, pole float over the depth. Bear with me, please, caller. on that rig is there, let's take a number nine off. start using them um, back shot I've never been a real fan 
but when you get this 017 and it's I don't know if it's because it's fresh off the off the spool it's quite stiff and it keeps that rig up out the water and for some reason it wasn't settling right when I was planning up right dump that meat back on it sticking out oh there you go look wow what's going on with that something to float again it's not on a shelf it's on a flat spot I know it's on a flat spot but look it's sinking that Thinking that rig when it settles. Yeah, as soon as that line. Okay. It's a good bit of live telly, isn't it? Plumbing up. to not shot your pole rig. Okay. I think what may be happening is um, the float is standing up because it's got the wire bristle. And then when that rig has got to the bottom where it's then dragging it under but I don't know why any of that didn't show up while I was plumbing it up and shutting it up I can't fish with it like this it's sticking out like a lighthouse Settles. Okay, well, I'll, um, I'll have to think I might get another one out after a couple of hours to see how we go. Um, I might get another rig out and put some back shots on it and bite the bullet and, uh, spend a bit of time today getting comfortable using them I've not got a long enough lash on it right now for back shots but maybe that's exactly what I need that's a little indication okay So I've never been a massive fan of fishing with small cubes of meat for F1s. I used to fish with luncheon meat, you know, all the time. You know, back when I'd call it luncheon meat, <laughs> not meat. Um, when I was a kid, you know, for catching fish at Willow Park, I used to fish it all the time before pellets. Um, you know, so you're going back 20 odd years. Um, so I used to fish with it a lot then, and you know, since pellets came out, little indication then, I got more comfortable using pellets. You know, if you miss the bite, stays on the hook, all that jazz. But I think this is the time of year when it could be pellets short or effective, or it could be meat short is effective. So I thought I'd come and have a try today, get comfortable with it, and then on. Uh, the match on Sunday, I can see what people are fishing around the lakes um, and ask a few people and then give myself a better idea for the spring festival 
whether I'm going to start short on meat or start short on pellets. I'll be doing one of the two. So I don't know what the time is now, but it can't have taken no more than five minutes to get a reaction. Had a bite. I've been bouncing a plummet around in the peg after I put the first bit of bait in. But I am the only person on the lake. Um, you know, and it's a pleasure fishing, pleasure fishing session. I've got no nets in. You know, these lakes at Tunnel have got loads of fish in them, so. I would expect a quick response. I'm just sitting there now. With nothing else going on. So I had a bite. And now nothing. So this is the issue I have with me. I sort of get a bit a lack of confidence um, in it. You know, I might need to change the way that I'm hooking it. Mother duck's got one baby duck. I saw one, I think it had a dozen earlier today, I think they're going to feast on the meat behind me. So clearly no bite this put in, so I need to put some more, some more bait in. Oh, I don't know what's going on there, that mother duck seems to be a bit aggressive towards the baby, I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe it was just because the male ones were reaching about. I don't know. It's going to turn into a uh, spring watch. <laughs> right. Let's do this again. Fours and a few sixes. There's two cans of meat I've put in. I've made up one fours, one sixes. Um, I've got another can with me. That's all I had in the house, but um, I'll stop on the way home and get some more. So I've just fed another full pot, fours and sixes. Uh, three quarters of the pots, fours, and then a few sixes on the top, and that's another bite. Unfortunately, no fish. I think probably what I've got to get used to with meat is not striking and just lifting into the bites. I think if I get a second bite off of that, it seems strange that I get one bite and bite and then no more off of that pot of meat. It's a little bit curious. Really got to see what that floats out.
go back over it. First fish of my meat conquests. Is it a bit worth one? You see Neil? Not learning much. F1 fishing at gold. Are <laughs> you on the middle lake now? One more fish and then I'll start feeding this next line. I put in three quarters of a pot of fours. And that is minutes for the first fish. Tackle them out. I'm not a fan of the way that floats sitting, I'll have to play with it later on today, maybe when I've finished. I have this suspicion like another number 12 is going to take it from sticking right out and burying it. <coughs> Might be that a 4B12 is better, <coughs> excuse me, for what I'm trying to do. Um, the stiffness of the line I think is what's causing the problem. Might be that the rig gets a bit better throughout the day. But let's see. Oh, I thought you were fishing at um, at gold. I'm going to keep going on about it now, I can't fish with the rig like this. The float is sitting with the whole bristle out. And it needs to be sitting with um, half that bristle showing. Not too much, you'll get a bite and you won't strike because it'll only dip the float to halfway down the bristle. And then I won't decide if it's a bite or if it's the float trying to settle again. I need that float without that line on the water to go down halfway down that bristle. I'll just let the rig settle there. 
See that a bite or is that the rig settled? If that's right, then that's it's not perfect. It needs to be a number 13, not a number 12. But that's now about two millimeters out of the water. I'm gonna get a bite. the battery pack on the side because the last few times I've been fishing I've um I've had the battery pack drop out. I don't want that. So this time we're gonna make that hook stick right out. That point is completely showing on that on that piece of meat. And I'm not gonna strike which is gonna be difficult for me. I'm just gonna lift it. Four mils, cut the six mils on the top. I said I'd feed that maggot line, but I've got distracted. So let's go have one more time and then I'll feed it. Dump all that. Let it float. Hopefully it's going to sit down with a couple of mil bristle showing after that rig has settled. bait must have sunk to the bottom by now. Strike, didn't I? Don't strike, just lift. Probably gonna be one of the hardest things I've got to sort out with meat fishing is to stop striking. Just fishing a banded pellet, there'd be no no problems. What's that then? Float is that? Why, why did you sink? Okay, that was a bite. Maybe it was a liner. Maybe it was a liner. The picture and sound are right now. I, I wandered around the whole of the venue today to try and find um, the best signal. And uh, it was either here or behind me in extension. Now that float wants to stick out like a life raft.
Okay. But I didn't strike. And that feels like a much better fish. AKA, it's not really moving much. I think it's about to wake up and go nuts. Is that a lumpy carp? It feels more like a carp than F1. Okay then. <laughs> Come off. It's not what we want to see really, is it? Rig smashing against the pole. Yeah, good. Okay, this was a match, what is it now? 20 past, 25 minutes gone, I've had one fish, no good. This is no good. Okay, I'm gonna feed. start feeding this edge as well. Bite, didn't strike, tried to just lift it. I felt the fish. Lifted into that one, push on. You can probably keep this number four on as well while I net these fish. I've got enough room on the banks behind me here at Tunnel to um, keep that number four on, which will save me some time breaking down and then putting that back on again. That's a better fish. completely under underweighed my fish at the weekend I think I said I had 24 pounds worth of F1s and I had 38 pounds worth of F1s I'm quite conscious that 
they're weighing heavier than what I think. I've played these other lines every two sort of chucks. If I drop the float, it sorts it out a little bit better. That, um, that wire bristle then takes it down. I think it's make sure that that line sits flush on the top of the water. seat there. So I get a bite and I lift it and I bump it and the meat's gone. And if it was a pellet I'd be fishing again. And here I've got to come back and re rebait. There's an in-between status of striking and lifting, you know, like a lifting with purpose. I don't know. Got a fish moving on the reeds to my right, I see him bashing the reeds. But this is the purpose of a practice, right? You know, to try and work this stuff out and iron this stuff out. Could just be that I'm, you know, a bit moany about it. And maybe I've missed the bites on pellets just as much. It's the shipping back and shipping back out that's um, it's on my mind. You know, I, I can afford to not lose time, or I can't afford to lose time. Um, you know, I, you know. I was talking to a guy at, on at Gold at the weekend. You know, talking about fishing the pole masters in June, and he was saying that he fishes the. Um, the adrenaline winter one because when it's harder the gap the skill gap gets closed between the not so good angler and the good angler and in the summer the skill gap gets exposed um, you know in the winter a you know, good angler has 50 pound you know not so good angler has 30 pound you know it's only 20 pound difference but in the summer not so good angler has 100 pound and good angler has 250 pounds, you know, that sort of difference. And, um, and I can catch fish when there's, you know, when they're on, you know, when they're having it, it's not a problem. And, um, but what I can't afford to do is I can't afford to lose these minutes, not hitting bites. And, uh, you know, sitting there going, you know, after 30 minutes, I've had two fish and I should have 10 fish. That's what, that's what I've got to sort out. I can sort that out for this spring festival. That'll give me a lot of confidence for the pole masters.
Yeah, I always way under. I'm always doing it way under Neil, so it's not a, it's not a problem for clickers and stuff. You know, I'm not worried. I'm going to go over a net limit. You know, if the net limit's sixty pounds and I'm counting to forty pound, you know, I don't want to lift a sixty pound net out to be honest. Who does? <laughs> um, so no, I won't. I won't go close to that limits. Never have done. Trying to get used to using this catapult, you know, from the from the last time. My throwing wasn't good enough when I came and fished in the winter. And actually, the first cut I used goes in that catapult. My catapult was no good either. <laughs> okay, if I dump the float, then it's definitely a better result in terms of it sitting nicely. See there, you know, where's my bite? Where's my fish on the end of that? I didn't lose the piece of meat though. The other thing I maybe need to think about is I need to toughen up the hook baits. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know though. I've watched lots of videos over the years of people fishing with meat and um, somebody will show you you know, having them out of water, some not out of water. Um, although I don't remember seeing anyone saying, toughen it up in the sun to dry it out so it stays on the hook a bit better. I don't remember any videos like that, but. I think it's a specific question. I wanna try and ask a couple of people. You know, do you find yourself missing bites or meat and you know, is there anything you can do to prevent it? Or do you just have to accept it? Um, the other thing that I'm not sure about, as I sit here today, is... Does anyone start on meat and then decide it's not working and then come off it really quickly you know the idea of using meat um, at this time of the year i believe is that you've got a better chance of getting some carp as well as the f1s and if you sit there for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and you don't catch you know is it a sign to just come straight off it you know are you going to fish for 30 minutes <clears throat> with meat and catch five pounds? These are some questions I've got in my head that I need to ask a few people. See if I can get a bit of advice. You know, or are they going to tell me just sit on it regardless? keep feeding those shallow lines and the edge lines for an hour and then go on them. Or maybe the fact that I saw a fish in the edge to the right of me earlier. Is that the sign I should just go straight down the edge? You know? And forget fishing meat down shore. If there's fish willing to come in the edge straight away. You know, get straight down there. Lots of things. Lots and lots of things. Uh, okay, I can't see what you've said. Uh, uh, no, I don't. But if you spoke to any carp angler, they would tell you that they fish air rigs all the time.
right? Where we sort of start to differ in opinion um, between groups of um, I would suspect is, you know, I would tell you if I was going to fish um, Gold Valley today, and you've seen me fish there a few times and catch, you know, a load of carp, and I would fish eight mil pellets, and I'm looking to catch carp, you know, eight pound as the average, I would tell you I wouldn't use a hair rig. Whereas if you were to go down there today and there was a load of anglers fishing it, and they were carp anglers or pleasure anglers, you'd find them all hair rigging it. Because I think they only ever hair rig it. You know, I don't think you ever find a carp angler fishing with a bait band. It just doesn't happen. Um, so that's where we sort of have a little bit of a difference of opinion, I think, depending on the style of fishing that you're doing. I don't know if it's because um, I would say that, you know, fishing with a bait bag is more efficient than fishing with a hair rig. I don't know if it's that reason. I don't know if it's because carp anglers are used to fishing with a hair rig if they want to catch a 20, 30, 40 pound carp, so they just apply it to smaller carp. Um, I don't really know why that difference exists. Um, but it definitely does. The only time I would hair rig fishing for carp is if I was fishing bread in the winter. I'd fish it on a hair rig, you know, three discs of bread. I'd fish that hair rigged. I have been known to fish double corn hair rigged, but again in the winter. But not in the summer. Not in the spring or autumn either, but. It's a good question. <clears throat> the only other way to sort of consider it though is whether you're fishing a hair rig you know, with a bait stop, you know, where you tend to push the hair through a bait and then put a bait stop, or whether you're fishing bait on a bait band, you're still, in both the instances, you're fishing the bait off of the hook. So the hook is completely exposed. So, you know, a bit of me says, you know, potato, potato, you know, what's the real difference? I'm fishing a bait on a bare hook. Um, so is it really that different? I don't know. The other thing is where you get a carp angler, they want to fish a larger bait. 12 mil, 18 mil boily, 25 mil boily. Whereas I'm fishing an 8 mil. The reason I'm fishing 8 mil pellet is because I want to create noise and I want to catapult them out. You, know, you can't catapult out 18 mil boilies effectively in a tight area. Um, you know, you can't do it. So. Maybe there's some of the reason for the differences around the bait size. The more I think about it. Right, now, if this was a match um, at the weekend, this is an awful start. <laughs> it's an awful start. I'm not happy with the way the float sits. I need to fix that. And I'm not happy about the amount of bites I miss on meat and the amount of time I lose. Um, so I need to find a better solution to this. Um, it's not a better solution necessarily. I need to I need to make some decisions about it, I think. Right now though, based on this, I'm starting on pellets. 
See, look, I'm gonna finally get a bite and I miss it. Look, I still keep the meat. Yeah, that's what, yeah, I've just read your comment, Neil. It is, yeah, it is a hair rig, but I always consider a hair rig, you know, where you're pushing the bait, you're pushing, pushing the line or the braid or whatever you're using through the bait. When I talk about a hair rig. But from the purpose of it's an exposed hook then yeah absolutely it's the same so I hope that helps grimly seem to be the most effective start, does it? Got to sort out, I'm firing those baits way too far. And they're not far enough. But was it 40 minutes? I've had three fish. Lost what I think was a carp. Which I suspect was foul looked. And uh, I missed a bunch of bites. I don't know what's going on with that float when it sits like that. I don't know if it's, I just don't know. <laughs> you know, now it's sitting down to a pimple. It's like it's. little bubble coming up near the float. It's not tow, you know, it's not moving around the float. It's, that's not what the problem is. It's flaring. If it sits like that, then I'm happy with it. The 
now it's started to sink down lower. It's gone from you know three mil showing to one mil showing. You know if that like the float's just you know just neutral buoyancy with the water. It's a bit weird. right thing to do is to get up get another top kit and put a 4b12 on and see if I have the same problems I need to unhook myself for that. Hi, Dave. Uh, no, not not yet, Dave. Uh, I'm just trying to sort out a couple of bits. I'm not happy with my floats that I'm using, but the way that I've got them shotted, shotted, and I'm not happy with the amount of bites I'm missing, and then having to re time I'm losing because I'm fishing meat. So. No, Dave. <laughs> Very much the opposite, but it's a practice day and, you know, that's exactly what practice days are for. So, I need to just go and get another top kit out of my bag. Okay. <clears throat> work out in a minute if this was the right idea or not. I think it is the right idea. I don't know if it's just the way that I've shot it or what, but I'm certainly not getting on with that 4x10, so I'm going to just put 
get the float in sort of the right sort of place, which is there. And then I will shot this rig up and effectively sort of start again. And to do what? We're going to use a longer lash. Let's do that length lash. And I can probably, dare to say it, use a couple of back shots if necessary. Get this shot up. Hopefully. That's going to be a bit better. Just want to see how it behaves and then I'll put another another a um, shot on to just finely tune it. But. Oh 
also think maybe using the I'm not sure actually I was gonna say use the small guru pot without the top on it but that looks like it wants another shot but it's at least the float sat properly it's too high but it's a good start Definitely need to put another shot on it. Which I do now. One of those maggots is poor at this distance. It's getting better there. I think a few more maggots is helping. All right, let's see if that rig settles a little bit better. Another shot. You watch it sink it. <laughs> There she goes. So stands up, stands up, put another number 12 on it, it sinks the float. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. I think that was a bite. Maybe a bit awkward. So the float's going from hmm, the bite. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Can't Shot a Pole Float Properly, live from uh, Thunderbarn Farm. Now the float's sitting halfway down the bristle. The line's out the water, it's not that. Mm. 
I think what I might do is I might put two number nine back shots on just to try and see now with the line on the water. Oh, is that a fish? I'm not sure what's going on. Skimmer. Excuse me, fish. I'm trying to shot my pole float properly. Okay, we're just sitting all right now. Now it's where I want it to be. It's like three mil. I, I guess it's about three millimeters. I don't really know. I can't measure it, but it's out of the water. Just a tiny fraction. But I think two back shots would help just with that stability of that line, I don't know. Today's the day to try it though. Now let's come up, that's a fish, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now I've had three bites and three chucks. I'm very conscious that I've had three bites, three chucks, and it's three fish. I'm going to just see if I can. Can't get another fish straight away without feeding again, because there's quite a lot of bait I'm putting in. Let's just see if I can get another one. Now the line's too long, by the way. <laughs> the line is too long. So I've either got to put back shots on it or I've got to cut it down.
pilot of the float wants to sink, or is it? I need to feed again. It's too long. I wonder if the fish are higher in the water and it's all those baits going down that's pushing the fish to the bottom and then they eat them all and then they come back up in the water and my bait's just sitting there on the bottom on its own. So the 4x12 is definitely working better than the 4x10. I wonder if it's because, even though there's a ripple, maybe there was a little bit of wind and um, that's what was causing some of the problems. You know, the float, you know, the hooks on the, on the deck. Is there a little bit of a problem with, you know, a little bit of tow? That float's just got buried under. Um, so we'll have to have a little look at that. But the 4x12 works better for sure. It's working better now. So that number four is easier. It's easier before I, until I put a top kit behind me. Under the fin. Yeah, it is. For a second, I'm gonna feed and then I'm gonna put. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what quite what it is, Neil, but the four the four B twelve is working fine. Um, it could just be where I'm laying on the bottom.
not quite sure. I don't normally fish with four by tens. It's normally always bigger. Um, four by tens, what, point two? I think I'm going to put two. Two number eights. I don't know where, because I don't fish with back shots, but let's try there. I would normally just cut the rig down, just reduce the length of the lash, but it's practice day and all that. Right, so now dump that bait there. I can see those back shots and I can just... Okay, now the float sinks immediately. Brilliantly. <laughs> but they're not even in the water, they're hanging out the water. And now I can just drop them in. And that feels... It feels more stable, I must say. It stops that line blowing around and then and that getting done. It's funny, you can come fishing, you know, again and again and again for years and years and years and years and years. And then when you actually come and just practice, try different stuff, it's really giving me a different perspective. Then I've fished many days <laughs> and many matches and I'm sitting there going, yeah, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's not a bad idea. Solves the line problem. Oh, look at that, lovely bite on me. See now I'm rocking, right? This was the start of the match now, I would have been loving it. I've, that's why I've put, um, I've put number eights on specifically. I know my two number eights might not help, but I've put two number eights on specifically and not number nines to help me see them. Not that I've got bad eyes, I've got glasses on, but. Lovely F1 that is. Definitely over two pounds. Lovely fish. Show it to my other camera. I've got plenty to talk to talk about tonight in my mini session. Already, we've only been fishing for just over an hour. So you can just drop those. I'll be laughing now. Imagine this was the start. Now it's taken a while, but I have I have had a plummet in there twice. Replumbing the peg. A replumbing, you know, putting a different rig on suddenly where it was so bad for the first 25 minutes I do not go under that leg please fish 
Um, okay, all right. Um, now it's it should be a great start. I'm not, I don't even know what to say to that, Neil. You realise? <laughs> no. Doesn't stop you catching chub, does it? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it does. So folks, it's a little bit too low. I could, I could, but it's all right. It's all right. Maybe one of those number nines off and number 10 on. I'll try that in a minute. Cause I can always push the float down a little bit. I think with the, with the back shots, you know, if I drop that rig, that pole down, that float will sink. Cause those backdrops will drag it. Those back shots will drag it down. But it's sitting a little bit lower than I want it to. I don't know why that's sitting low now. Sit, yeah. Gotta just change something, maybe a night. Cool, that was a bite, wasn't it? Um, let's change a nine for a 10. True, true. I can't, I can't argue with that. That's better. That is better. So it's only taken me an hour or an hour and a bit. I've got a, I've got a better pole float 
that shotted better. I have an easy method with the back shots to help sing that line. I've stopped striking. I'm now more lifting. Which means I don't strike off the meat all the time. Well, I must say that float is sitting lower despite me swapping that shot so I do need to play for it play with it but with the back shots at least I can I can make some minute adjustments to it just as I say, drop them down a little bit. <laughs> as he uh, as he gets a bite and strikes off the meat. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I've looked it. Definitely having a lot of hook showing as well. I think I'm consciously changing it as I'm fishing. Just having more and more hook points showing. No need to bury it. No need to be even close. And don't want to be close. be um, happy just on the top kit. Now I know my nets aren't in, they would be, but if that was on there instead of out there, I could reduce that time of putting a new piece of meat on because I could get it done a lot quicker. Although I'm conscious um, of making sure I'm not feeding fishing down a sloping shelf and I'd much rather be towards the bottom of the shelf. I'll, um, <clears throat> in the description of this, I'll link the video that I was watching yesterday <clears throat> with, um, with Mikey Williams. I found it really informative. I only watched the first bit of it because I was so busy last night and I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch the rest of it today um, about fishing meat. The thing I liked about the video is um, is he showed everything. This is the rig, this is the hook length, this is the main line, this is how long the hook length is. Interestingly, he had five inch hook lengths I think it was. I'm fishing with a three. And um and I think that's because what the goal here is that there's a little bit of a slow fall on that meat and um my bulk's further down. I remember watching a video once where uh, uh Paul Holland was talking about um, whether to wash the meat off or not and you know that type of stuff and Paul was saying you know it's you know it was good to have a few pieces of meat that fell really slowly or hung on the top or did that type of stuff because it was the it was the slow fall of the meat that was that was drawing the fish in and they were watching the meat go down and I think that's why he's got a five inch hook length I'll have to re-watch the video um but I think he's trying to create a fall in the last bit of the rig. 
so the fish watch that bait float down naturally and I think maybe I'm bombing it down a bit too quick. I guess the belief is that the fish aren't lying, you know, flat on the bottom. You know, they're sitting, you know, one foot up. And they go down when they see the bait. Yeah, I've seen them. I've only watched it yesterday for the first time. Yeah, I subscribe to the channel. I've, I've seen him fish. He the pole masters here in the tunnel. I saw him last year. He was fishing it. Yeah, I'm always looking for, <clears throat> you know, maximum information. I was watching a video yesterday on mugging fish. And... Um, you know, there was there's not even a mention of what the of what the line was, you know. And you know, it's no good for me. I need a bit more help, you know. And I think a lot of other people do too. The other thing I'm thinking about this this rig here is I'm doing it on a white hydro, which is pretty soft. I've only put it in yesterday. I've not, you know, it's not stretched out yet, and I've not, you know, tightened it up a bit more. But so it's a full length top kit with white hydro in it. I'm fishing pretty close, um, and I'm just wondering if actually the better idea is to fish with a. Um, a grey hydro. Mikey also did that yesterday, but I never, you know, I always, I always go for white. That's my default. But I wonder if because I'm, I'm so short, you know, there's more danger of the fish deciding they want to try and kite underneath the platform, and the elastic's going to let them do it. That fish has gone. Don't know what's going on with that fish. Um, but lovely bite. Just lifted it. No messing about. Easy peasy, oh, he says. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who's not, you know? <laughs> There's only a few, a few anglers that I've met over the years where I would say They'd rather keep themselves, you know, rather not tell you, you know. Apart from river anglers like yourself, river anglers, you can be dodgy. <laughs> it's like being a member of MI6, I think, sometimes, trying to talk to a river angler. Especially if they're on the bank. I feel like maybe you should be shot for even, you know, knowing they're there. <laughs> you catching? No, just started. It's always just started. Have you caught anything? No. I think what the what the angler's thinking is, please don't, please don't fish my barbel spot. You know, it's it's sacred. I can't tell you anything.
carp anglers will do anything for a cup of tea. Maybe that's a cup of tea and a bacon sandwich. I remember when, uh, when I used to fish shore fields in older shot a lot. Um, when I was a member of Farnborough. I used to be over there all day and night because I lived just next to it. And um, the carp anglers that would come down and fish it for the weekend and stuff, they'd do anything for a cup of tea and a bacon sandwich. I'll tell you anything though, just to be clear. So I'm happy with the 4x12 float, I'm happy with the back shot, I'm happy with the length of leash, lash, whatever you want to call it, line between the pole float and the pole tip. I'm not decided which pole pot I like the best, the short one or the short one with the lid on the top. I think I, think I prefer the one with the lid on the top. It's not got the actual lid piece in, but it's got the sides. It just makes it a slightly bit taller. I think if I wanted to feed a little bit less bait, you know, it'd be, it'd give me more confidence. So I think starting meat short might be back on the, the dreaded get a bite miss it no bait left um might be back on the agenda <laughs> just seen your comment must be related to the bit about river anglers being a little bit secretive Let's just feed a few six mils this time. Yeah, it's definitely better with that back shot. You can sort out the looper line straight away. If it's not going to naturally fall, you can just drop the drop the back shot in the water and it sorts it out. Lovely. See there, like this fish here, this fish has got a bit of oomph in it. 
and it could easily switch and go under my feet and maybe cause me some problems. F1. No carp though, and on that basis, is it better to fish meat or better to fish pellet? Right, one more fish, I think, and then we'll switch that pole pot over. And... I might get the grey hydro out and see what that's like. I've got a kit with grey in it. Just got to check it's not perished, but... I've not used it for a while, so it's been in there for a season. Oh, actually, no, it hasn't. I put it in um, for perch rig on the river. That's what I did. Put an indication then. I think with meat, you just got to be a bit more patient. Remember not to strike. <laughs> I don't know if that's the second or the third time now I've been saying the similar thing <laughs> about being just a little bit more patient. Remember don't strike. And then I've lifted more than just a lift. And I've knocked the bait off. I can feel myself doing it. I've got to really focus on um, not striking. So used to fishing with pellets. I have the same problem, by the way, with expanders. It's the same problem. All these soft baits, I feel um, I feel disadvantaged because my nature, you know, I'm striking. And I think that's just coming from a, you know, what type of fishing you're doing, and you know, etc. etc. You know, I'm fishing the pellet waggler, you know, and I see a bite, I'm striking, you know, because I'm fishing 30 yards out and I need to to pick the line up. fishing for pike these days I'm trying to set the hooks you know those types of things I'm fishing for perch I'm conscious that the males are bony and I'm trying to pull that hook through so I'm striking with a bit of force and then I come to fish with expanders or meat and it's just doing me a disservice
Oh, I so wanted to strike then. <laughs> I think probably that's why. Um, now I'm thinking about it. Maybe that's why I keep foul looking fish, fishing short on pellets because I'm getting small indications. And I'm striking with a force, which is why I'm foul hooking the fish. Unlike just then, um, where it could have been a fish that's gone through the line, and because I'm not striking, I'm just gently lifting, it's not setting the hook. I've definitely had less foul hook fish today. You think compared to the match I had at the weekend? I'd love the foul hook fish. I wonder if that's contributing to it. I do like it in them little dinks though. Maybe it's the position that I'm fishing that's meaning I'm getting a few less foul look fish fishing towards the we're pretty much at the end of the shelf as it slopes down before it gets to the deepest part of the of the peg. Could be that as well. little indications and desperately trying not to strike. Yeah, I'm thinking that Neil, I haven't got any with me. I I don't know how much it's going to make it better, you know? That's a funny old ghosty F1 that just has one lunge and then goes, no, give up. It's not even a ghosty one, is it? Oh yeah, a little bit. I'm going to change that pot. Um, I'm going to change that pole pot and I'm going to change it for a grey hydro. Let's see if that feels a little bit better.
same rig, changed the pot to be the bigger pot and I've switched it to grey hydro. The other thing that I might need to think about is that I should flip between either grey or white depending on the size of the F1s. You know, I think if you're in, I'm not catching them now, but when I came and fished canal, I was catching loads of stockies, you know, like six, eight ounce carp, F1s, sorry. So I think maybe I've got to just be prepared to switch. But this will help me decide which one I want to start on, I think. There was a splash. I don't think I had a bite. What's that, Steve? Stop walking. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Yeah. It's great that show. Do love it. Stop winding, Bob. Bob loves it though. I swear that um, Bob Mortimer it just does it on purpose to wind him up. You would have thought after so long that you know you listen to Paul Whitehouse. It's not quite the same though, I don't think they do pole fishing short with meat though, really. They'd be, uh, they'd be fishing for fun today in a river. Well not today because the river's season but... This isn't quite their style of angling. It should be though, I should... Uh, I should drop Paul a message. He's a... Uh, Angling Trust Ambassador and it's, um, it's a very popular part of the sport. Luckily, um, I've got no reel on a pole, so I can't wind it anyway. I'm not sure if that was any better on the on the grey hydro or not. As much of a muchness I'll only probably really realise when I catch something that wants to go a little bit loopy. It's 
working though. Definitely working. I only lifted that as well. Right, let's go back to seeing if I can get a two bites off the one feed or two put ins. So it's easier when you get it in your head that you must not strike. Struck then. <laughs> the other thing about using the grey is maybe that's better because there's a bigger chance of carp. Maybe that'll be a bit better than the white. From that point of view, it might be better. That's a lovely one. That's what I want to be catching. You know, that's a two and a half pound. certainly keep the line going though right it's 11.54 I started just before I started two hours ago so it's not a it's not a over in 10 minutes line is it you know where my short line I felt only lasted an hour until it started to struggle at gold at the weekend um, 
you know, I'm still happily fishing this. Why's that float sitting down like that? Happily fishing this two hours later. Okay, don't know what's going on there. Now whether I'm catching fast enough or not, I don't know, but you know, I was looking at the match weights um, on hot fishing, because that's where Tunnel Bar and Farm post their match weights. Um, and they've had some stonking weights over the last couple of weeks. You know, 200 pound, you know, is not uncommon. Certainly, well, that's, that's, that's not true. Um, up to 200 pound they've had um, you know, loads and loads of weights over 100 pounds just loads of... so you've got to be fishing if I'm thinking about what sort of weight am I fishing for you know I am fishing for You know, hundred pound plus. It's not really any different to the summer in that respect. You know, in terms of target weight. <laughs> I didn't strike that time. Definitely didn't strike. So, whilst I am having fun, am I catching enough? I don't know. So target weight is you know, 100 pound, 50 pound an hour, two pound a fish, you know, 25 fish an hour. I'm not at that rate. But that's, you know, without any you know, bigger bonus fish, and I've not fished shallow yet, maybe there's fish shallow, and then maybe I'll be catching faster, I don't know, but... That's what I need to be thinking about next, is... Is the catch rate fast enough? But I guess I'm going to judge that when there's, you know, a lot easier, and a lot better when there's, you know, a lake full of people around me, you know? Oh, I missed his duck. Oh, there's a lump. Look at that. Look at that. Hello. I'll try and dob you. Which way did you go? OK. 
carp about six ish pounds just came through the peg unfortunately it's gone from the the shadow to the to the white water reflection from the sky so I couldn't see which way it was going but um I quite happily dobbed that for a bonus fish that float has just started to sit down again I don't know why Uh, it lands there, bristle out, and then it's sinking. right down to the bristle tip again and I took a number 9 off and swapped it for a number 10 so why it's now down that far I don't know but look it's straight back down to that position it's not the toe the rig's not getting pulled suddenly the float it wants to sit lower I've been using it for what half an hour Take a number twelve off. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I will. I don't think it's that. But I will. Um. out bristle base of the flows float past the rubber you know and the the weights up there it's, it's not that I don't know if it's some underwater tow or it's taking on water problem I can just bite off a number 12 but let me really understand why it's happening you know that is the answer that I seek that pack 
it sits above, you can see just a tiny bit of the black underneath the bristle, the lines out the water. Now it's gone down to three mil shown, but I think that's because I had a bite. I don't know. <laughs> it's sticking out better now. I think, unless I can get a good answer for it, what I'll do is when I shot them up, I'll make sure I have a few number 12s in there. You know, take a number nine off. You know, put some, you know, put a number 10 and some 12s or whatever, but. So I can pop them off if I see the same behavior. It's a lot easier to bite a 12 off than it is to bite a, a struck then. A struck, but I got away with it. Um, it's easier to bite a 12 off than it is a nine off. In my mind, anyway. Yeah, once those floats start to go, they, they they go. There's not a lot of resistance in them, but you know that's why, you know that's why they're the slim design, though, right? You got to think about it. You know, they're designed to be like this, so they go under the water really easy. That's the purpose of a slim bodied float. Less water resistance. I didn't strike, I swear. <laughs> oh, I checked it, I checked it. I checked it now. It could be the case. You know, there's a lot of water in a lot of these lakes. For all I know, they're trying to adjust the water levels. You know, this one, this platform's nicely out of the water, but, you know, on extension behind me, there's a couple of platforms. You know, they're only the you know the the top of the platform bit out of the water. You know, out out of the water by an inch and a half. I don't want I don't want it going over the platforms. So they might be trying to adjust the water levels between the different lakes. I would assume that they're all connected. I think what we'll do is have another fish here and I'm going to go down the edge and have a look. I've been firing maggots in there now for a good hour and a half. So I think it's time that we a little look.
Look at that fish, see the scale. Do now is I'm just, if I feed it, I'm going to feed it six meals. Let's see if I can see if it encourages a better stamp of fish. See if it makes a difference. But I will go down the edge if I find one more, and then um, I won't abandon this line. Well, I might not catch anything down the edge or shallow, but if I don't catch shallow. In front of me, I will have a look on, on the track, I think. We'll have a look down the bottom. See what sort of stamp of fish there is to be had. do is I'm going to fish double mega on the hook I'm just going to fire in some mega and then I'm going to go down there with a the pot of ground bait Catapulting has been, you know, all right, not not spectacular. So I'm just going to use the ground bait to just get the fish's attention and to say, you know. Here, just like right here. And if we don't catch, then I'm going to dump a load of it down there, and I need another section of pole. Thank <laughs> you. 
straight away <clears throat> okay feels like there's fish down there Got that feeling there's another bite there. Question is, how many? What are they? How big? There's three bites, I've not it. Maybe they're all over the place. With my sporadic feeding. But the ground beat should fix this. And the thing that I'm going to try to be really disciplined about is you know, never feeding where my rig's in. You know, I can come back in and you know, I can put some ground bait in the pot and I can put it in. But I'm not going to fire over the, over the rig. Just you know the three or four bites or you know indications and now nothing. Another fish. I'm gonna feed twice. I'm gonna feed that line twice. Feeling it a bit heavier now. Shallow line. Pop with some ground bait in it. Two lots of maggots. It will be the pot of ground bait. Indication. Well, it was a bite, I think.
No, I've just fed maggots down this edge. I could have fished it. You know, pellets as well. If I was starting on it, maybe I think pellets would be a thing. But because I'm starting short, well, I plan to start short, then um, I think maggots are the right idea. fish there, I'm getting locations and you know I think some are liners, some are bites but I wonder if it's going to take them just a little bit of time to settle just over where I've put that ground weight, I don't know. Who knows, it's not happening as quickly as I want it to happen. Oh, she said, get the fish. <laughs> <laughs> that old chestnut, Graham. <laughs> oh, hello. the sun I suspect there's a rain cloud behind it I just just go sunny and then pour down I think that line in front of me again too far for me to throw bait when I hook a fish which is a little bit annoying but there's a sort of a big reed bed to my left and I've got fish I'm fishing over it I guess I could have fished this side of it you know be fish really short but I didn't, didn't feel that was Enough. 
not sure if I could car up what's going to happen. Is it going to go straight round the leg of that platform? I don't know. The duck is looking, looking around the spot constantly. You know, it's only 20 inches deep, maybe. The duck wants to, it can dive on that bait, no problem. Do the same maggots, and then I'm going to go ground bait over it. playing on this shallow line more than anywhere else. <laughs> I said about the sun. And then the rain, there's a massive rain cloud <laughs> straight in front of me. And the wind's blowing in this direction. It's not looking good, that. so easily to that next platform. It's giving me something else to think about. I'm going to keep up with this pot of ground bait the chuck. Push the rig quite away then. Oh, I think it's a carp. Enough. It's gone back over the rig again and I've struck and felt a fish.
ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the rain. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not actually, that's not actually the effect I'm looking for, Peter. Um, 